The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 11th, I believe it is, today, the April 11th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important, more important than that is I'm here during this next 53 minutes to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, want me to review something, and you can't call in, you can always send me an email. You send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's down 340. The S&P's up 11. The Nasdaq's up 54. The semis are up 32. The trannies are up 25. The Russell's down 5. Gold's up 9. Silver's down 14 cents. Slice be crude off 93 pennies. Natural gas is off 9 cents. The 30-year treasury print out 115.08. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside. Broadcom, 33 bucks, 2.5%. Super micro, 32 bucks, 3.5%. Alpine Immune Sciences, 37 bucks. 17%. NVIDIA, 17 bucks to the upside. And Genix Therapeutics up 17%, $7 plus move. To the downside, it is MicroStrategy, 43 points, 2 and 7 tenths percent. Regenerin, 24 bucks, 2 and a half percent. Granger Worldwide off 20 bucks, 2 percent. Globe Life down 17, that's a 16 percent move. And BioRad Laboratories is off 13 bucks as well, a little over 4 percent to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day by taking a look at that U.S. Oh, hold on a minute here. We might have a, a bit of a pause. We're not going to start there. We're going to start with John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm, uh, I'm doing very well, and thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. Steve, I want to ask you very specifically about the uh, NASDAQ 100 and its under, excuse me, and its derivative futures. Okay. Steve, I remember listening to you yesterday, and I think you were highlighting the daily chart where you saw the potential for a TD9 count pattern setting up. Uh, that sparked my interest. I've been looking at things and have this very specific question. When you look at the combination of the pattern, your tools, and the seasonals that you've displayed, you know, uh, repeatedly in past time, do you see any potential for a rally coming out of this sideways pattern that's been uh, March 1st, that was a Friday um, uh, start of the month. So, uh, sure. So to answer that question, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip back to a daily time frame chart for all four equity future contracts. We can come back and take a look at any other detail if you'd like. But to answer that question, which my question, the answer to that question is going to be yes. Now, let me explain why that's a possibility. If we take a look at the NQ, that's the, I'm just going to simply expand out the chart and we're all looking at the exact same thing. So this did go ahead and uh, complete a, a TD9 count bottom pattern. It did that on April the 9th. And yes, Yesterday, we had a test of that low. Price held, rejected that bottom, and closed right back above the top of its profile. So 
what we know is the TD9 count bottom has been a solid bottom because it was tested yesterday. We also know that that oscillator and change line is a solid level of resistance. Uh, still seeing, sorry about that. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that. Also, John, to you. Forgot to change screens. Um, here we go. So now we let's just start back over. So we take a look at the TD9 count bottom. You can see it on my screen. That green arrow shows us when that nine count there formed out there. So that confirmed the bottom. It was tested yesterday. We can see price closed back above its profile level at 18.163. What we can also see yesterday is that price bound resistance at the oscillator and change line, which has acted as resistance ever since uh, March the uh, 25th out there. So in essence, I would say first, John, this has set up a trading range. And the trading range would be between the TD9 count bottom low and that's down at the 18.051 level and the oscillator and change line. Today, that's printed to 18.424. But that's with regard to the NQ. The reason why I said there's a possibility that we could see a bottom forming here is let's take a look at the weak indice. The weak indice has been the Dow Equity Future contract. What do we see today? We see bar number eight that is forming. In order for this pattern to complete tomorrow to confirm a TD9 count bottom, all price needs to do is close below the price point of 39,219, or 38,525. I have no idea what's going to unfold between now and then, but it seems like a pretty good, the odds are favorable that the Dow Equity Future contract will also form a TD9 count bottom pattern, the bottom being between today and or Monday, uh, but uh, you know today could be that day. So two of the four Equity Future contracts have bottom patterns. When I put that together, John, with the Russell 2000, what we can see that it's doing, it's been pulling back and testing its breakout level of support, 2034. As long as price doesn't close below that, that can be a bottom out there. And that leaves us with the ES Mini. And there's where I'm kind of stumped. Because if you're asking me, do I see a bottom pattern on the ES Mini? I certainly do not for its daily time frame. So before I would change screens or anything like that, what questions does that pose for you? And then I would throw out to you, do you see any kind of a bottom signal potentially in the S&P? Or the ES Mini, or the Spy, or any of the any of the instruments. Uh, Steve, uh, as you know, I have uh, you uh, given the concentration in American business amongst the large, the large getting larger and dominating everything else. Um, you know, I have uh, long uh, shared my tale of woe in that I have not had the opportunity to have a New York Stock Exchange top U.S. 100 futures contract. Sure. Because the S&P 500 is, in effect, the NASDAQ 100 plus the NYSE U.S. 100. Those 200 names, market cap-wise, dominate everything. And um, uh, so as I'm trading the S&P and its futures, the NASDAQ and its futures, I'm always looking at how the uh, NASDAQ 100 and the NYSE 100 are differing, uh, if they are. Um, so what I'm observing is there's this dramatic difference. Um, interestingly enough, year to date, NASDAQ 100 and S NYSE 100 and S&P 500 Year to date are all up. Yes. Which, yes. 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 No. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got 15 seconds. <laughs> hey, John. I'm do me a favor. I'm going to finish that thought when we come back. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. That's that was going to be option B out there. We'll be back with uh, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den, otherwise known to folks as John from Philly. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. We're talking about the indices out there, and uh, due to time, uh, we, his comments were cut off during that last segment. So, John, go ahead and uh, pick up from uh, from where he left off, if you would. Steve, try, uh, in, in my best attempt to succinctly answer the question you posed, um, as I look at the S&P 500 index and the New York Stock Exchange U.S. 100, uh, I don't see anything that jumps out at me. I could see further pullback slash decline. I could equally see bottom form and, and then turn up. So um, since it's cloudy, uh, as far as that's concerned, uh, I'll withhold any any real cut. Let me, can uh, I ask you a question? What is attracting me, however, is looking at that NASDAQ 100. Yes. Uh, it has gone sideways now for five, almost six weeks. Yeah. Every time we come down to lows, including yesterday's low, we run out of selling steam. And um, uh, it occurs to me, don't ignore the TD9 count uh, pattern that you have been talking about. And if memory serves, uh, Steve, in uh, thinking about the seasonal tendencies, I might be mistaken, but I'm not looking at a chart, but I'm thinking uh, the seasonal tendency is to rally near tax time into May. And looking at the sideways pattern, I, I'm asking myself this question. Is this trading range, and it's just been a tight range, trendless, up and down, we're near the bottom of that range, perhaps, all these things are pointing to us uh, the, the possibility that we bottom and then rally. And I just might parenthetically uh, lastly add, you mentioned three names that were up strongly today. 
Yes. NVIDIA, Avago, and Supermicro. And what I will uh, observe that NVIDIA chart, if you go back and look at the past two months, uh, Tuesday, uh, yeah, it was Tuesday. Tuesday uh, uh, possibly completed a near exact AB equals CD pullback pattern. So the rally in NVIDIA today uh, all makes sense coming out of that pattern, and hence all these uh, the questions that I'm asking myself about the potential for the uh, the NASDAQ 100 overall. And, of course, the NVIDIA is a big component within uh, beginning a rally phase. Uh, so that's my answer to your question. I might ask you if you can show the seasonals to the extent that you've got your hands on. Today. Sure, sure. I, I will. I, I've got the NVIDIA charts up here. And so you, you mentioned, you know, we should at least respect the TD9 count pattern. And, you know, uh, two days ago uh, when NVIDIA was pushing to the downside, everybody thought it was curtains. Um, you know, I saw a couple of different posts out there and, and I just said, hold, hold on. <laughs> what what that, that day was, was a TD9 count uh, bottoming pattern out there that certainly completed yesterday. And now we're back inside its profile uh, that formed a few days ago. So the next battle for NVIDIA is at 895 and then above that 917 and above that 932. Uh, John, I did. I want to ask you a question. So you mentioned uh, the importance of paying attention to the S&P top 100 and the, uh, and the New York Stock Exchange uh, top 100 stocks out there. And I've never traded this. I didn't even know that it existed. You, I'm sure you did. Uh, ticker symbol OEF, which is an iShares ETF. Doesn't have a ton of volume in it on a daily basis, so not a vehicle I recommend necessarily trading. Um, but it might provide that information that you're asking about. Uh, so I happen to go ahead and put the both the OEF on my screen, I can't put the New York Stock Exchange uh, top 100 um, up, up there right now. I just have to change data feeds. I've got too many things that are open, but I do have the queues up here. So we can kind of take a look at the two of those side by side. So if I was going to, if you were asking me, what is the top 100 S&P chart? And I believe that I haven't, you know, I investigated for like 60 seconds. So what I initially read was it was the top 100 largest U.S. companies out there. And if we take a look at it, it does have that same Roadsman to indicator topping pattern. But we can see here that price, whereas the ES mini closed below profile yesterday, and it's trading below it or it was 50, 10 minutes ago uh, when I looked at it. Um, here we haven't even gotten down to support, which is at the 241 to 242 level for those top 100 uh, stock charts out there. So have you have you traded this ETF or do you pay attention? Have you paid attention to it? Is it what I think that it is? <laughs> it is what you think it is. I do know it. I've ne I do not trade it because of its thinness, as you point out. Um but uh, yes, I, uh, that is one of the uh, the indices uh, that I do monitor. So, um, so and I'll ask you another. That out. Yeah, I'd like to ask you another question too. So, if you were, if you had in your perfect world, to look at a stock chart that would would it would would the stock chart that you would want to see combine the uh, NYSE top 100 and the OEF and combine those two? Would that have any relevance? Do you think, or what would it be? If you had, I, I, although you can't trade what you were looking for, but what if we were able to combine the two to create some type of um, combined instrument to see what its signals would be? What what would that be for you? Would it would it be potentially this OEF combined? Well, Steve, I'm going to beg off on answering that question because uh, nobody <laughs> in the position to actually get that stuff done would construct that for me. So, so ah. uh, that ah. that point is essentially moot. <laughs> so okay. there you well, are. All right. All right. All right. Well, hey, John, thanks for calling as always. Always good to uh, speak to you and we'll look forward to your next call. One last thing. Uh, I thank yeah. you for your help. If by the end of the show, if possible, please uh, display uh, your uh, seasonal study the next couple of months. For we're going to do that right now. Yeah, we'll do that right now. I'll do that right now for you. So I'll put that up thank and uh, display that. You bet. You have a great day. So we do have the uh, NDX 100 chart up on our screen here. Now I'm going to get the uh, D-trend uh, signal off here so you can see what the, you know, so we're, we're basically, the, the, the NASDAQ 100 basically is the entire year is a favorable seasonal cycle. If you take a look at the last 30 years worth of data, the only month that's a uh, poor month 
performer inside the NDX 100 in September here. And again, this is based on the 38 years worth of data that we have out there. Uh, so we're, we're nearing a point in time, typically, if I put the uh, D-Trend tool on here, where we typically form a bottom. This shows right around April 14th. We don't use these right to the day. We've got that TD9 count bottom in the NDX, in the NDX, in the NQ chart, not in the NDX 100 chart out there, but inside the NQ chart. And this does suggest what John was talking about, a move into the early May timeframe. That'd be May 5th. And then a retracement down into the uh, later part of May, third week, third, fourth week of May. And then a, a rally up into early June, then a pullback or final rally up into July before we start to see a, a bit of a pullback out here. So that's the seasonal pattern uh, for the uh, NDX 100. As long as I'm here, if we put up the seasonal pattern for the S&P 500, so we can see that and this is over that's over a 38 year period let's just put it at 96 you can see we are in a favorable seasonal cycle that typically doesn't top out until the first the end of the first week or beginning of the second week inside of may out there and if you take a look at this you know this can also be an issue here john that we're dealing with if you look at this april is the uh, third best performance month for the s p 500 over a 96 year period so the tide if you will, might be helping keep things somewhat sideways. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right, that means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Let's get to some of our requests out here. The first one coming in from Jay in uh, Boca. Wants to take a look at an entry point potentially for ticker symbol IOT. IOT is Sam Sarah Inc. out there, which is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern today. So that says that uh, IOT, Sam Sarah, uh, Jay, has either formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday, because yesterday so far is low, or will by tomorrow. Uh, so you're looking for a low entry point. You've got the pattern right now um, to to consider taking that trade. We'll go take a look at a 30 minute chart or a short term chart. See if there's any signal of yesterday or today being that bottom. If it's not, then what you do is you'd probably wait till tomorrow to see how this plays back. So on a daily basis, this is giving you that possibility to go ahead and take an entry on a weekly time frame, which has a Rogement indicator top, may be targeting a 3071 level out there. It may not get down there. That's the area where it broke out from. I don't have any kind of a topping pattern that I visually see on the monthly time frame chart. So now let's move over to an intraday chart. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame. So I see this gap down yesterday. So uh, what do we have here? We have a TD9 count on a 30-minute that's been negated. So that says no. Now, we may get down and just test yesterday's low. I would expect that we would. On a 30-minute basis, that had volume of 390,000 shares. So if you get a test and rejection of 3176, that could be a bottoming signal. You'd like to see something more than that. For example, a close above 3312 would go a long way. That's a TD9 count breakdown area on the 30-minute. So with that gap to the downside, I'm not expecting we would see much. But let's just take a quick peek here on a 15 minute chart uh, see what we've got I don't have anything there either and uh, so on a 65 I'm sure we're gonna see the same thing nothing there so I'd be patient and I'd wait it looks more like uh, perhaps tomorrow might be that day to reconsider taking that long position inside of IOT so Jay Hope that helped you out, and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. G-Man, inside the Tiger's Den, he'd like to take a look at XOM. So let's take a look at Exxon Mobil out there. It has been on a tear out here. And if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we're going to see it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top this week. Now, the last time that Exxon, if I open up the weekly chart, that Exxon Mobil made a significant top, well, guess what it was? It was a TD9 count top. It was followed up by a Roachment Indicator top, but it was back on September 29th. And that led to a move lower. Now, we're trading into that swing point area. That swing point had volume of 82 million shares. We came into it last week with 90 million shares. Now, we have tested that high, uh, the high being 120.70. And we're just below it right now. So the weekly is saying prepare for a potential decline to the 111.29-ish area. The daily time frame chart, I see a TD9 combo, a TD sequential, but I don't see a confirmation of that top. I see a TD9 count pattern that was negated. So I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. Although today is a key reversal bar for sure, maybe a bearish engulfing as well. Is there an A to B equals CD? Is there a sell the D point pattern? And, you know, there is... Uh, it's just a gigantic C to D expansion out there. Nonetheless, you have to respect it. What what else? With the, the additional information, what else? The additional information that I can provide to you, G-Man, is that there's also a new profile that is forming. And I would say not until price closes below the bottom of that profile, and it's a bullish structured zone out there, 118.40 to 119.47 if you were long. Well, you got to do what you got to do. But until you get a close below, two close below, 118.40, um, you've got the top. But it may be more of a sideways-ish type move out there. And what I would be paying attention to, just simply because of the directional correlation, is what's going on inside of Light Street Crude, which has a TD9 count top for its daily time frame. But it has been consolidated with inside its daily profile. So I'd like to see two things for the energy sector, ExxonMobil, which makes up a majority of the energy sector, to tell us that, okay, it's ready to do something other than just consolidate with inside profiles before it starts its next leg up. So you'd like to see a close below one. 1840 on XOM and lights recruit a close blow 8409. I think if you have both of those conditions, then we're likely taking a look at that weekly TD9 count top that takes us back towards that 11127 area.
period. So I hope that made sense to you. If I confused you, my apology. I try not to, but uh, sometimes I confuse the heck out of myself. The next request out here is to take a look at Intuit. This is for David H. I didn't write down the question because I was doing multiple things. David says, hey, Steve, I've got the 630 puts expiring April 26. Want to get your perspective on how low Intuit should fall over the next couple of weeks out there. Well, right now you're at support. We're looking at a daily time frame. Shoot, you're at support on a weekly time frame. Now, that's a beautiful thing, David, in Panama City, because you need to see price close below those levels this week, come tomorrow, to suggest that we're headed lower. So the bottom of the profile, it's a bullish structure daily profile, is down at 625.58. Yes, uh, we've tested that so far. So far, it's rejected it. The bottom of the weekly profile is at 624.37. So let's use that lower figure. And really, in the case of the ES, uh, the ES mini, Intuit, in, Intuit. Um, was it INTU? Yeah, it was INTU. Okay. Um, uh, for some reason, I was thinking Intel. Uh, not that that matters. So and the, the other area that I would use out here, though, a key level of support that needs to be broken was really established by that bear sash candle about a week ago or so. If you see a close below that low, that is 620.33. So we got 620.33. And really on the weekly, you got 624.37. If you see a close below that, come 620.33. If you see a close below that, come tomorrow, then I would say that Intuit is likely to head lower out there. Where would that lower price be? And that was really your question. I would say the lower price would then be, because you've got a monthly TD9 count pattern that confirmed and completed last week, would be 601.10. But not until you get breaks of these profiles, or certainly that swing point on the daily time frame, where the bulls showed us that they were establishing a, uh, at least trying to hold. Now, I see that that was also tested a swing point back here, David, from the day of uh, November, I'm sorry, March 15th. So it was 3.1 million shares on that day. That was tested and rejected with 1.2. And then uh, again, yes, uh, again with 1.6. And then today we're down with 200. Boy, I don't know. That, that David, this is really going to bust through this area, knowing that we've got profile support, knowing that we traded down into a swing point out here from back on uh, March 15th with much lighter volume. Just I'd use that information. Is there anything else that I can provide in when? That chart's gone, but let me put up this 30-minute chart here. If you give me a moment, let's uh, do this here. Let's change this and load a different template so that we're looking at the 30-minute uh, and... Uh, so the 30-minute chart, not that I've got, I take that back. I've got a buy the D point pattern that formed out here in the last half hour with that uh, bull sash candle. So if Intuit is going to rally, it certainly needs to close above the 630.14 area. That would be the top of a 30-minute uh, profile. So I'd watch that to the upside. If it closes above that, eh, you know, maybe you take whatever bread off the table uh, right now. But um, you're, I know you've got some time on this. I'm not trying to talk you out of that position. Just trying to let you know what I see on the charts. And right now, price is struggling to bust through these lows out there. So I hope that helps you out. When we come back from this break, we're going to take a look at Amazon for Duncan Steve, CRH for ELO, and anything else that you folks would like. I'll have to go through my emails, look through the Tigers Den, see if there are any requests out there, just simply so we can get to those. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Sorry about that. Uh, just took a swig of water. Ice cube came out and boom, right into my teeth. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to crunch that into your ears. I see that OJ has passed away no no comment really on 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 his life but i, I did meet him the first time i met him um uh many years ago i used to play out at riviera country club it was the first time that i had played there and uh lots of lots of you know stars that are out there now i didn't know that at the time i mean this is back in the 80s um when i played out there but i remember going down sitting in the uh, club in the uh, locker room put down on my show on my shoes and it was kind of a fairly large uh, cushiony area so people could sit on both sides and the guy behind me tapped me on the shoulder and said can i borrow your shoehorn and i turned around and it was uh, oj out there who i used to see out there all the time was uh, peter falk from uh, you know colombo he, he played most of the rounds he played was just by himself out there I, I don't know why uh but in any event out there so that was my only oj story out there um let's see here give me a second i think we might have a caller let me see if i can get back to this here did he have an axe no he didn't have an axe all right let's get back to the uh, questions out here amazon duncan c wants to take a look at amazon and uh so we take a look at it from a daily standpoint you're trading above both its green oscillator and change line and the top of its daily profile so what we would call amazon here is in a full out breakout mode i don't have a topping pattern on the daily time frame so it's in a super uber bullish mode out there when we take a look at the weekly time frame we have that same signal out here the signal is it negated a td9 count top it did that last week we're above profile above oscillator and change line amazon wants to head higher and when we look at the monthly time frame chart there's absolutely no topping pattern out here but price is taken on its all-time high in the case of amazon that gets us back to july of 2021 and the number out there is 188.65 we're at 187.15 right now the volume on that monthly candle is 83 million shares last month we were pushing into it with uh, 702 million shares. She's, where are we at this month? Only a few days worth of trading, right? It's only 11. 300 million shares. We're go already, and we're going into 83 million shares. Holy shnikes out there. So, um, Duncan, your question was, where is Amazon headed to? Uh, nothing short of the moon, as we see right now, unless somehow conditions change. But we don't, oh, geez, no, no, don't do that. Oh, man. All right, I got to kind of hit this back button. Somehow I hit a button and started deleting all the requests out there. And now I... Oh, oh 
Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, a, a Stevie, a Stevie Air, and uh, I think we're good. Okay, I think I think we're pretty. Uh, so that that's what's going on with regard to Amazon. I'm just trying to see here. ELO wanted. To, okay, there we go. So CRH is going to be our next symbol out there. I guess I could have gotten to it another way. Let's take a look at uh, CRH. This is for um, ELO inside the Tigers Den. So you've got a rose momentum indicator top. We're trading below profile. Uh, the next level of support on a, a daily time frame is eighty dollars and thirteen cents. We're trading below the oscillator and change line on a weekly time frame. A close below it right now. That's eighty four thirty seven, which suggests that this has lost its momentum. It also is confirming a, it looks like it's confirming a Rhodes Mint Dominicator top. Let me just make sure of that. Oops. The high from last week was 86.63. This high is 80. Yeah. So you're going to get a key reversal bar that will confirm a Rhodes Mint Dominicator top. Now, that says that 80.13 level Duncan is a real key level of support. Why? Because if price breaks that on a weekly time frame, we could be heading back to 69 to 65 level. On a monthly time frame, there's a potential for a sell the D point pattern that's forming. Still too early in the month to know that, but right now, when I take a look at CRH, it's giving us a signal that at least 8013 is in the uh, picture for you. So, Duncan, I hope that helps you out. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, I'm sorry, that was CRH. I hope ELO, I hope that helps you out. Uh, Dan in New York City wanted to take a look at the UNG. His question is, I believe it was, is it forming a TD9 count bottom? It's not. If we take a look at the UNG, the UNG formed a Rosemont to indicator bottom. It confirmed that pattern on April 1st with that gap to the upside. And basically, we're trading into that area right now. It's struggling. Take a look at UNG out here. Uh, it was unable to take out the bottom of that daily profile, which is up at the 1604 level. If we look at the weekly time frame, there's no bottom pattern there. The monthly time frame is no bottom pattern there. In fact, on a monthly basis, what this really tells you is that you can see how price has been below that oscillator and change line for over a year out there. If price were to close above it, that would tell us, okay, now we've really got something or we potentially have something with 3098 potentially being a target. Now, what I'll also do out here is, uh, Dan, is move over and take a look at the uh, natural gas contract and take a look at its intraday. I've got the daily up on here, and here the daily generated the bottom signal on March 28th, whereas UNG had to wait till April Fool's Day to do that. It was March 28th that generated that bottom signal. So if you're going to trade UNG, First, make sure you know which contract or contracts are inside there of natural gas and then get access to natural gas. You don't have to trade the futures contract, but that's where you're going to get the clearest and best information from since that's the underlying instrument. Now, in the case of natural gas, the 30 minute time frame it completed a TD nine count bottom at 1130 and a price closes below that. That being. 1.785 and it closes below that certainly in 12 minutes that's going to suggest that there's still lower price to come today do i see ung as a trade not really it just hasn't proven itself in time periods where it should have so but you've got to do what you've got to do and so that's the information i can provide to you so hope that helps you out we had a request to also take a look at uh, rivian that's not rivian let's try this for rivian r-i-v-n and uh, if we take a look at Rivian, geez, this looks awful. So we have, we are trading on a, uh, we're trading all-time lows, I believe. We most certainly are. So there's nobody in Rivian that is having any fun at its party. The question is, is Rivian going to form some kind of a bottom? Well, let's take a look at that daily time frame chart. Let's open this up and see what we've got here. And the answer to there is, boy, it did form a bottom a few days ago, ran right into resistance, the bottom of that profile, 1072. I don't have any kind of bottoming signal or anything on a daily time frame for Rivian. What do we have on a weekly chart out here? Whew. Not really much. I wish I could be of help to you with regard to Rivian, uh, but uh, this thing looks like it wants to just simply head lower. That's at least the information that we see as of today. So best of luck to you if you are trading Rivian, R-I-V-N. You did not, Peter, discuss the, miss the discussion of the euro. Well, I was waiting for you to, uh, to, to arrive. And now that you're here, let's go take a look at the euro out there. And when we take a look at the euro, this thing is looking like it is failing, potentially failing miserably. Now, what we really want to watch today, and it's really key, is going to be the low from February 14th, from Valentine's Day. And 
And if price closes below that low, 1.0695, where 1 .0, that's been tested so far, and if we get a close below 1.0695, the U.S. dollar will absolutely be a rocket ship. Why will it be a rocket ship? We'll take a look at this large A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out there. Let's take a look at that. That gets us back to the TD9 count from back in uh, October of uh, 2023 out there. And that gets us down in towards the 105 level. And if that is, in fact, what happens out here with regard to the euro, we're going to have, because this is 65 or 50, 58% of the weighting in there, that's going to really power the U.S. dollar index higher. So you got to watch that swing point. And that low is 1.0695. Peter, we close below that. U.S. dollar index is headed higher. And if you take a look at the yen, the yen wants to weaken for sure. Here's its A to B equals CD pattern on a daily basis, and there's no topping signal whatsoever for it. And if we take ignores there on the monthly time frame, and right now the pound is saying it wants to get pounded. It's got an A to B equals CD that takes us down to 123. That dollar index, and it could be on fire, depending on what the euro does. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at advanced auto parts. AAP is a ticker symbol here. The question is, uh, where is there a buy point? That's a great question. So on a daily time frame, we can see that today is going to become bar number eight. And that suggests, and we're, it's, as it's pulling back, it's still above its breakout level at 7045 out there. Those are the best conditions when you can see a bottom pattern form below price gets to the breakout level. Now, I don't know if it will do that or not because it's the next two trading sessions that will complete that pattern or likely complete that pattern. Tomorrow, all price needs to do is close below 
the close of bar number five, and that's at 77.34. So the odds favor that that's a likely thing to happen out there. So you could be getting a bottom pattern between today and or Monday out there. On a 65-minute time frame chart, I don't see that bottom as we speak right now. That has not confirmed anything. If we switch over real quickly to a 30-minute chart out here, do we see a bottom pattern? We do not as we speak just yet. So I'd uh, pay attention to the shorter-term time frame charts out there, S&P, because uh, you are AAP is getting close to a potential bottom pattern. So um, let's do this here. We got uh, I was just talking about that U.S. dollar index because we were talking about the euro and the currency pairs, the three primary currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index. And so I don't want people to think that just because U.S. dollar index is getting ready to break out, that it means curtains for gold and or silver. But this chart here, the top portion of this U.S. dollar index, this shows us those uh, vertical lines out there. Those are the beginning of the year. So I've taken this apart just to see how often do we get the U.S. dollar index moving higher, the S&P 500 moving higher, and gold moving higher. You're not seeing that chart? Oh, son of a gun. Here we got, we got it. Well, at least we got uh, 40 seconds or so to take a look at it. Sorry, I, I clicked on the chart and put the wrong thing up there. So now you can see it out here. So now when we take a look at this, uh, you can see this is the year. You look at the pattern on the right. We're higher in the uh, dollar. We're higher in the S&P. And we are higher in gold. You may remember last year I talked about these conditions, that we are likely going to see these conditions. I didn't know when. But that when appears to be now. Now, the last time that we had that same condition out here were for the entire year uh, that the uh, market closed higher. The, uh, that takes us back into the 2019 level out there. So 2019, we have the U.S. dollar index finish higher for the year. The S&P finish higher for the year. And gold do the same. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming out there. I'll be back with you tomorrow on fabulous and fantastic Friday. But first, you have a terrific Thursday. Take care. Be safe out there.